Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I find it far more nerve-wracking speaking on stage and singing on stage, um, but don't worry, I will be singing for you after my talk. I want to start off by asking a question. Would you like to be able to have a positive impact on the people around you and your community? Put your hands up. Would you like to be able to have a positive impact on the people around you and your community? Good. Glad to see that I'm in the right place. <laughs> and that's what I'm going to talk about today. I recently turned 21, and while I was partying up in West London, I went onto the microphone. I wasn't drunk at that point, but I did go onto the microphone, and I wanted to thank my family and friends for coming. I wanted to thank the people for making my event such a success. But most importantly, I wanted to thank God for allowing me to see 21. I wanted to thank God for allowing me to experience the good things, the bad things, and the growth that came with it. But let's face it, last year, we saw a number of young Londoners, a rise in young Londoners, being robbed of their growth, being robbed of that potential of reaching 21, not only due to gun and knife crime, but due to the lack of opportunities, the lack of resources, and the lack of support. Now, I'm not going to use my time on stage to preach at you about what we don't have and what we should have. What I do want to do is to encourage each and every one of you to seize the opportunity to inspire yourself and to motivate and to empower yourself, the people around you, and your community. It's been two years now since I won The Voice, and not many people know the full story. A lot of people see that as the start of my career. That was only the middle of my journey. I remember applying for the show when I was 16, and that was the first series of The Voice. I remember seeing the advertisement on BBC One, and it's saying, if you can sing, you can get in. So I thought, okay, I can sing. I was at college at the time. I said, I can sing, so I should get in. So I applied, I auditioned, and you have to see a round of producers first before you get onto the TV round. So I went through those rounds of producers, um, and while I was waiting to hear back, and this is a true story, while I was waiting to hear back, I had a dream, because I was so anxious, I had a dream. And in the dream, I was in a line with about 50 other people, and I had Will I Am in a colonel outfit, marching up and down. You know how your dreams don't really make sense? <laughs> but he was in a colonel outfit, marching up and down this line, and he stopped and he pointed, and he says, you're not gonna get it this time, but you'll win the second time. And that's no word of a lie. And the reason why I remember that dream so clearly was because I woke up and I spoke about it. I went to my manager at the time and I said, I had this crazy dream. And he was like, no, you're going to get it this time. I spoke to my parents and they said, um, don't worry, let's just see what happens. Then I got a letter saying I'm not what they're looking for. And that really knocked me back. A 16-year-old, an aspiring singer, wanting to get out there, saying I'm not what they're looking for. Because the way they advertised it is if you can sing, you can get in. And the fact that I didn't get in made me feel like I couldn't sing made me feel like my talent was worthless. And it took me a while to get back on my feet, to, to gain that confidence again, to gain, that, um, gain that, that power and that drive, that passion that I once had. And eventually I got back onto it, started singing, started performing around. And then I performed at a birthday party, a small birthday party in South London. And Kanye King, who's the founder of the Mobile Awards, was there. And she said, you've got an amazing talent. I, I want to put you forward for The Voice. I, I want to give you this opportunity and put you forward for The Voice. I know a couple of people, they may have a conversation and I'll put you forward for The Voice. So I was like, okay, cool. And the moral of this story is not about having setbacks and getting back up and going back on the horse and riding it again. It's about seizing the opportunities. I saw an opportunity there and I grabbed it with both hands. Music and singing was a part of my life from a very early age. I remember going across the road to Rising Tide, which is just across the road from Hackney Empire, and it was the first of its kind in Hackney. State-of-the-art recording equipment, rehearsal studios, um, and recording studios as well. And, you know, it was a place where that really encouraged creativity. The young people that would be there were Labyrinth and Retro 2, and they were young. And now look how successful they are today. It's one thing surrounding yourself with influential and talented people. And it's another having that support network to carry you through. An example of that would be Hackney Empire. I call this my home stage. Susie McKenna, the creative producer, and Hoffman, the sound engineer, can testify to that, the amount of memories that we've had on this stage. I remember um, performing for the first time on this stage. I was only four years old, and I was tap dancing. Don't ask me to tap dance now, because I can't tap dance to save my life. But I was tap dancing, and to this day, I'm still on this stage. And that's because I seized every opportunity that came my way. Another story that I wanted to tell you, 
I grew up with this young man. Um, his name's Isaiah. He was two years younger than me. And I bumped into him at Fringy Park in North London. And it was just one of those passing things where he's like, oh, hey, how you doing? What's up? What have you been doing lately? It was one of those type of things. Um, but I now wish that I had spoken to him longer. Um, this was this time last year. Um, after I spoke to him, I found out three days later that he was stabbed and killed in Wood Green. That was an 18-year-old man robbed from reaching his full potential. Now, I don't know the circumstances that surround it, and to be honest, to me, I, don't think, they're, I think they're irrelevant. I just see that an 18-year-old man was robbed from reaching his full potential. Now, these things happen, don't happen in isolation, and I believe that there's four factors that come into play that contribute to the decisions that young people make. The closure of youth clubs. Youth clubs played a massive part and played a massive role in my life. I remember it was like a place where all the young people in the borough, Islington, Harringay would converge to this one area. So you forgot about post-Cold Wars. And we had one thing in common, whether it be sport, whether it be music, arts, craft, dance, drama. We all used to connect and we used to love each other. We made loads of friends. But once you close these youth clubs, you start to create this divide amongst young people. This hatred towards, oh, he's from down the road, I don't speak to him no more. Oh, he's from the other ends, I don't speak to him, I don't, I don't chill with them no more. Young people need to have a youth club where they have that ownership, that place where they can go just to be free, to be creative. The second factor is role models, the lack of role models that we have in our communities. By all means, we've got the great Idris Albers and the Lenny Henrys, but we need more role models to inspire our young people to send out a good message. Not just saying, yeah, I've achieved great things, but to use that success to raise everyone else up. I live by this theory that when the tide comes in, all the boats rise together. And that means if one of us is successful, we bring everyone up with us. An example of that is the members in my band that I tour around the world with. They're all young people, all under the age of 20 years old. I'm giving them that experience, because that experience will be vital for them in future lessons. Third factor would be the lack of supportive families. I'm fortunate enough to have an amazing family that can support me in anything that I want to do, whether it be drop music altogether and decide to go to university and do politics, or whether I want to juggle my politics degree and write in a second album at the same time, which I'm currently doing. Lord have mercy on me. <laughs> and the fourth factor is the lack of opportunities, resources, and support. Now, without becoming too political, that's going to be quite difficult. But without becoming too political, due to the recent government cuts, the opportunities, the resources, and the support that was once out there for me is no longer there anymore. Those opportunities were so vital in creating and the development of me and giving me that confidence that I can stand on this stage today and speak in front of all of you people, which I'm still kind of shaking about. <laughs> but it leads me on to say that it takes a village to build a child. I strongly believe it takes a village to build a child. And every significant person in this room has a responsibility to inspire, encourage, motivate, nourish, look after, pave the way for our young people, for the next generation. And I really do hope that you believe the same thing. We have that responsibility. And now that I've achieved some form of success, I believe that I have, I'm now a villager. I'm now part of you guys where I can inspire my young siblings and my younger peers to make them believe that they can achieve whatever they want to achieve. And this leads me on to my song that I'm going to sing. This song um, I wrote last year, it was on my album, which is out now. Go ahead, a little plug. Um, so go ahead and, and, and try and get, grab that if you can. And it's called Love Speaks Louder Than Words, and I do hope you enjoy it. So much wasted air spent without a care, but girl, I double dare you to feel the power in the words. It never goes unheard, even when you're silent, it's real. So say what you wanted to say, or walk if you're walking away. It's so loud and clear in the message I hear when you stay. 
Just say nothing. Just say nothing. Cause nothing compares to knowing you're there. Love speaks louder than words. Love speaks louder than words. It doesn't take a genius to know it when they see us. Girl, we leave them speechless each time. It's hard to pin it down, but it's real when you're around. A feeling words can never define. So say what you wanted to say, or walk if you're walking away. It's so loud and clear in the message I hear when you stay. Just say nothing. Just say nothing, cause nothing compares to knowing you're there. Love speaks louder than words, love speaks louder than words. There's no love back guarantee, there's no contract between you and me. What we have is unspoken and cannot be broken, you see. Just say nothing, just say nothing, cause nothing compares to knowing you're there. Love speaks louder than words, love speaks louder than words. <laughs> Love speaks louder than words.